Hearken to me, gentlemen, come and you shall hear a tale of the boldest brethren that ever more they were. Though one of them was Adler Young, the t'other King Esmere, they were as bold men in the deeds as any far and near. As they were drinking ale and wine within King Esmere's hall, when will you marry a wife, brother, a wife to glad us all? Then bespake him King Esmere and answered heartily, I know not that lady in any land that's fit to marry me. King Adeline hath a daughter, brother, men call her bright and sheen. If I were king here in your stead, that lady should be my queen. Read me, read me, dear brother, throughout merry England, where we might find a messenger betwixt us two to send. You shall ride yourself, brother, I'll bear you company. Some through false messengers are deceived, I fear lest so should we. Thus they renished them to ride of two good renished steeds. And when they came to King Adeline's hall, of red gold shone their weeds. And when they came to King Adeline's hall, before the goodly gate, there they found good King Adland rearing himself thereat. Now Christ he save good King Adland, now Christ you save and see. You be welcome, King Estmere, right heartily to me. You have a daughter, said Adler Young, men call her bright and sheen. My brother would marry her to his wife of England to be his queen. Yesterday was at my daughter dear, the mighty king of Spain, and then she nicked him of nay, and I doubt she'll do you the same. The king of Spain is a foul pain him, and leaveth in Mahound, and pity it were that fair lady should marry a heathen Hood. But grant to me, says King Esmere, for my love I you pray, that I may see your daughter dear before I go away. Although it is seven years and more since my daughter was in hall, she shall come down once for your sake to glad my guest is all. Down then came that maiden fair, with ladies laced in pole, and half a hundred of bold knights to bring her from bower to hall, and as many gentle squires to tend upon them all. The talents of gold were on her head set, hanged low down to her knee, and every ring on her small finger shone of the crystal free. God you save, my dear madam, God you save and see. You be welcome, King Esmere, right welcome unto me. And if you love me as you say, so well and heartily, all that ever you are come about, Soon sped now it shall be. Then bespake her father dear, My daughter, I say nay, Remember well the king of Spain, What he said yesterday. He would pull down my halls and castles, And reave me of my life. I cannot blame him if he do, If I reave him of his wife. Your castles and your towers, father, are strongly built about, and therefore of the king of Spain we need not stand in doubt. Plight me your troth now, King Esmere, by heaven and your right hand, that you will marry me to your wife and make me queen of your land. Then King Esmere he plight his troth, 
by heaven and his right hand, that he would marry her to his wife and make her queen of his land. And he took leave of that lady fair to go to his own country to fetch him dukes and lords and knights that married they might be. They had not ridden scarce a mile, a mile forth of the town, but in did come the King of Spain with Kempis many a one. But in did come the King of Spain with many a bold baron, one day to marry King Adeline's daughter, the other to carry her home. She sent one after King Esmere, and all the speed might be that he must turn again and fight, or go home and lose his lady. One while then the page he went, another while he ran, till he had o'ertaken King Esmere, I wis he never bland. Tidings, tidings, King Esmere, what tidings now, my boy? Oh, tidings I can tell to you, that will you sore annoy. You had not ridden scarce a mile, a mile out of the town, when in did come the King of Spain, with Kempis many a one. But in did come the King of Spain, with many a bold baron, one day to marry King Adeline's daughter, the other to carry her home. My lady fair, she greets you well, and evermore well by me. You must either turn again and fight, or go home and lose your lady. Read me, read me, dear brother, my reed shall rise at thee whether it is better to turn and fight or go home and lose my lady now hearken to me says Adler young and your reed must rise at me I quickly will devise a way to set thy lady free my mother was a western woman and learned in grammary and when I learned at the school Something she taught me. There grows a herb within this field, And if it were but known, His colour, which is white and red, It will make black and brown. His colour, which is brown and black, It will make red and white. That sword is not in all England, Upon his coat will bite. And you shall be a harper, brother, out of the north country, and I'll be your boy, so fain of fight, and bear your harp by your knee. And you shall be the best harper that ever took harp in hand, and I will be the best singer that ever sung in this land. It shall be written in our foreheads, all and in grammary, that we two are the boldest men that are in all christenry. And thus they renished them to ride of two good renished steeds, and when they came to King Adeline's hall of red gold shone their weeds. And when they came to King Adeline's hall until the fair hall gate there they found the proud porter rearing himself thereat. Christ thee save, thou proud porter, Christ thee save and see. Now you be welcome, said the porter, of what land soever ye be. We've been harpers, said Adler Young, come out of the north country. We've been come hither until this place, this proud wedding for to see. And if your colour were white and red, as it is black and brown, I would say King Estmere and his brother were come until this town. 
Then they pulled out a ring of gold, laid it on the porter's arm. And ever we will thee, proud porter, thou wilt say us no harm. So he looked on King Esmere, and saw he handled the ring. Then opened to them the fair hall gates, he let for no kind of thing. King Esmere he stabled his steed, so fair at the hall board. The froth that came from his bridle bit, lighting King Bremor's beard. Stable thy steed, thou proud harper, stable him in the stall. It doth not beseem a proud harper to stable his steed in this hall. My lad, he is so lithe, he said, he will do naught that's meet. And is there any man in this hall were able him to beat? Thou speak'st proud words, says the King of Spain, thou harper here to me. There is a man within this hall will beat thy lad and thee. Oh, let that man come down, he said, a sight of him would I see. And when he hath beaten well my lad, then he shall beat of me. Down then came the Kempery man and looked him in the ear. For all the gold that was under heaven, he durst not nay him near. Then King Esmere pulled forth his harp and played a pretty thing. The lady upstart from the board and would have gone from the king. Stay thy harp, thou proud harper, for God's love I pray thee. For if thou plays as thou begins, thou'lt steal my bride from me. He stroke upon his harp again, and played a pretty thing. The lady laughed a loud laughter, as she sat by the king. Sell me thy harp, thou proud harper, and thy stringers all. For as many gold nobles thou shalt have as here be rings in the hall. What would you do with my harp, he said, if I did sell it ye, to play my wife and me a fit when a bed together we be? Now sell me, quoth he, thy bride so gay, as she sits by thy knee, and as many gold nobles I will give as leaves be on a tree. And what would you do with my bride so gay, if I did sell her thee? More seemly it is for her fair body to lie by me than thee. He played again both loud and shrill, and Adler he did sing. O oh, lady, this is thy own true love, no harper but a king. O oh, lady, this is thy own true love, as plainly thou mayst see, and I'll rid thee of that foul pain in who parts thy love and thee. The lady looked, the lady blushed, and blushed and looked again, while Adler he hath drawn his brand, and hath the sword and slain. Up then rose the Kempery men, and loud they began to cry, Our traitors, ye have slain our king, and therefore ye shall die. King Esmere threw the harp aside, and so with he drew his brand. And Esmere, he and Adler Young, right stiff and stout can stand. And I their sword so sore can bite, through help of grammary, that soon they have slain the Kempery men, or forced them forth to flee. King Estmere took that fair lady, and married her to his wife, and brought her home to merry England, with her to lead his life.